you read the uh, introduction. Uh, actually, let me stop and let's go over the agenda. That'd be a little better. Okay, so housekeeping. If your phone is, is on a, isn't silent, please make it silent. Uh, please use the app to provide feedback for any of the sessions, especially this one. Uh, so if, and also if you have any suggestions, that's the place to do it as well. Uh, and if you have ideas for other topics about safety, I'd like to hear that. And again, please silence your phone, but you're welcome to tweet. Definitely want you to use the app and hashtag art forum is uh, the Twitter hashtag you're using. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about, uh, you're gonna have to listen to me for about 20 minutes, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but then Scott Moyer is going to speak, and his picture's a little bigger, and you'll see why when he stands up here. Um, and then we're gonna have a, a panel discussion after that. I've got uh, seven or six suppliers that, uh, you know, they've, they've seen across industry what goes on in the safety uh, spectrum. And of course, Scott's gonna add what Dow does. So, uh, so be thinking about questions if you had, came in with questions, that's even better. Uh, and answer, ask hard questions, because I want to see, especially the supplier sweat, right? Okay. So the, the way I couched this session, we talked about uh, Bunsfield. And if you know anything about Bunsfield, it was a major explosion. It was the largest explosion in Europe since World War II. Uh, Amazingly, there was very few fatalities given the size of the explosion. Um, but, uh, you know, and it was extremely expensive. I'm not going to go read all that. So, you know, from, a, from the standpoint of, of impact on somebody's bottom line, you know, we also saw recently uh, BP and how much that has cost, the BP offshore disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. We've seen how much that cost. So safety... Safety has a payout, but you're preventing something from happening, right? That you're trying to guard against. So in, when you think about Bunsfield, this is, this is something that you always think it will happen to somebody else, right? You don't think it'll happen to you. If when you buy a car, you buy a car with safety features on it, but you're buying it because you think somebody else is going to cause you to use those safety features. You don't think it's because you're following too close behind the guy in front of you or something of that nature. This is a very similar situation, right? They had, they had some uh, instrumentation problems. I don't want to go into a lot of detail on the problems here. It's very well documented. There's a book on it uh, with the findings and, and you can go online to, to do it. But again, the you look at the different problems, they're not all technology problems. Uh, they're not all, uh, you know, they're not all people problems either. But the reason I wanted to use Bunsfield to, to couch this is because in the uh, press conference where HSC gave their findings, Gordon uh, McDonald presented three questions. And those three questions are, do you understand what could go wrong? And I, I honestly think industry has a pretty good idea of question number one. Do you, or do you know what systems you have that will prevent this from happening? I think generally speaking, industry has a pretty good idea about that. Do you have the information to assure that these systems are working safely? And this is the one I think and based on our research, industry is falling down on. Because, you know, when you start going through the, uh, the standards for life cycle management, you find that it's a very complicated process. Not necessarily complicated, but there's a lot of work to it, right? And we've, we've got plants that have fewer and fewer people in it, they get more and more responsibility, something gets dropped, how do you know, right? And then the, uh, the fourth question comes from a fellow that uh, presented at the Mary Kay O'Connor, uh, Mary O'Connor, can't shoot, 
Anyway, it's at Texas A&M that goes every year. It's a safety symposium. And he's, he has presented the question or posed the question, what is your role? And I think, you know, working in plants, you always hear the role, your role is in safety, safety is your role. You always hear that. But I always, I always go back to, you can tell a tree by its fruit. If you think about that, and you think about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, is safety really your role? And I think that's something very important. It's very important for safety engineers as well, but I think it's important for managers. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of people talk about being safe, but at the end of the day, managers, the reason you're in business is to make money, so you have to balance that. And sometimes one wins, and I'm not going to say who. So those are some things to ponder as we go through here. So we have done, you know, ARC likes to do surveys. We've done surveys. And in that survey, the overall, we, we ranked overall maturity based on those survey responses. And we have what we call groundbreaker. These are the leaders, uh, you know, the, the really proactive leaders. We've got people who, who are current. They're up, they're up to date with their, their standards and whatnot. Competitors pretty much follow, but you not sure, and then you've got followers. But if you look at the data percentages, right, it's, it's a lot of work to do. And the, and the sad thing is, this data hasn't changed over the last 10 years. This isn't moving, and this needle needs to move. Um, okay. Again, little has changed. So what we recommend, some of the things we recommend as a result is what do you have for key performance? How do you measure this? How are you measuring your progress? Uh, how, what are, and what are you measuring? Is it auditable? If, I were, if, if some outside entity comes in and asks, how are you doing this? How are you doing on these, uh, these factors? How could you report that? What would you point to? Some of the things that uh, you can, some actions you can take to become what a leader is in this field is you need to articulate a fully defined safety culture and it needs to be supported from the top. And one of the problems we have in this industry is we have engineers that do the safety and implement the safety but they don't know how to talk business. So you need to start talking safety in terms of risk because businessmen understand risk. And you'll see there's actually a trend, um, there's some software uh, providers, suppliers that are actually couching this as risk, doing it from a top-down type of thing. And they're, pulling in, they're beginning to pull in safety data to keep that risk measurement up to date across the enterprise. I don't like that first word. Somebody, I lifted the slide from somebody else. But you need to infuse a safety culture among the, the employees. And it needs to be clear. And it needs to be with accountability. Most people have a full-time safety manager. The safety manager needs to understand safety systems. They need to understand all the ins and outs of that. Most safety managers understand physical safety of personnel. They're not really up to date on safety systems, SIS systems, and what could go wrong, and how to maintain those. That's usually a different skill set. Do you have, what are your procedures? Are they written? Do people know what your procedures are? Uh, people throughout the organization. Uh, do, you have, do you have the tools to do a comprehensive assessment? Do you have the tools to keep your the initial assessment up to date to make sure it hasn't changed. Because safety is a living issue, right? It changes. You're, just as your, your organization changes, your safety system changes. The safety system ages. How does that affect what your assessment uh, was, was 10 years ago? Uh, 
This, this is important as well as encouraging your employees to report the problems. There's, it's a two-edged sword on this, right? Because if someone makes a report and you don't act on it, that's a liability. People don't like liabilities, don't want to look bad. But that's the only way you're going to find out the status of the organization from a safety standpoint is to encourage that openness. Okay. And I think the other thing is, is being, you know, having your employees influence what your safety policies are. And training. That's, that's a no-brainer, but uh, training is very important. I think for the most part we do that. I know as a contractor I would go to the safety contractor safety council and have to get trained on stuff I didn't really care about, like uh, how to climb a ladder and wear the harness because I was a computer guy so I didn't really care. But we do a pretty good job at training, but you still have to, if it's not pushed from the top, the employees won't take it serious, and that's very important. So a note on culture. Uh, this is a famous quote, quote from the 70s, or 80s, sorry. Cult, it, it says, the key to this is culture constrains strategy. If your corporation does not have a safety culture other than a name, then you're not going to be successful being safe. And that has to come from the top. So some of our recommendations, we did a, a process safety life cycle management study this year. And some of the recommend, recommendations from that study definitely conform to the standards. Do you, do you know what those standards are? Probably most people who are attending here today do. Uh, but do the other folks in your organization understand the safety or do they let, that, let somebody else handle that? That's not their job. Get help. A lot of the smaller organizations don't have the expertise in-house. You, you need to reach out to people who do have that ex expertise. It's a little more expensive, but you're, you're saving on p personnel in the long run because you're not hiring those personnel full-time. And the reason you don't have them, those personnel full-time is because you can't keep them engaged full-time. So contract with somebody that you trust to help you through this stuff. It is very confusing. I think Peter, uh, if he went to the HEMA workshop yesterday, he may mention of that. Um, <clears throat> speak with legal. This is, unfortunately, it's a very sensitive topic, but it has ramifications throughout the organization. You need to get their buy-in. They, you need to. Um, when you speak, you need to speak in line with what they have set. So you definitely need to keep legal involved with your safety, uh, your safety program. When I say seek load, load, low load solutions, you want to find tools that help you do this job easier and preferably automatically. Anything that captures data automatically, pulls data forward, keeps it in a safe place, allows you to access it at any time for audit reasons, you want to find solutions of that nature. You need to talk with your insurance companies. This is, this is becoming a big deal. Mem most insurance companies now have recognized the importance of safety systems and the liability it carries if they're not kept up to date. Again, we need to talk to our management. Management does not understand safety systems, but they understand risk. So we need to start talking in terms of risk. When I say integrate for the big picture, I've got this picture here. Safety, process safety isn't an island unto itself. It's not a silo. It has many different pieces that feed into it. I show alarm management and cybersecurity. There's actually some other things that feed into it as well, like your process control system and how it's designed. Uh, the other thing that also feeds into this is how you maintain your processes, how you maintain your sensors and valves how you maintain the, the pipes, right? There's a, there's a point where a failure is a failure and the, the, you just can't stop it, but if you, if you can recognize it ahead of time. And those system, integrated systems can give you one place to look and, and recognize that risk. Okay. Yeah, let's go hit back, okay. 
So just to repeat, and these are actually quite uh, well known in the safety community, but I think the key on, this, on these three questions, you need to ask yourself, what is your role? And when you think about what is your role, what are you doing to meet that role? I hate animation. Okay. So one of the other things I wanted to reach out to, if you are an end user, uh, one of the things about safety is everybody's extremely guarded with their data, extremely guarded with their information. ARC a few years back put together a, a benchmark consortium for end users. And what this allows you to do is put your, your data up there to, so, to allow you to benchmark, benchmark yourself against others in the industry. And so the way it works, it's, it's totally anonymous. Nobody else can see that it belongs to your company, but they could see that it belongs to this industry. And you can, you can then take a look and see how well are you doing against others in your industry in, the, in safety. And so I wanted to let you know about that. If you're interested in it, there's a link at the bottom of the uh, profile in, or the session description in the app. You can click on that and leave your email. We uh, will reach out to you and let you know more about that. Uh, the, I think the other thing that's in, probably a downer for the suppliers, we do not make this data known or available to suppliers. It is only for the end users. This is created by the end users. Uh, and uh, I think this would be a great tool for end users to get a handle on, just like cybersecurity, reporting that you've got issues, what those issues are, what the data is, how we can improve. This is a very important thing. Anything that ARC can do to help uh, do that, we want to do that. Okay. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say on that? No. Okay. So good. So with that, I'm going to invite Scott to the uh, podium.